It's time. It's time for a new patch for Dragonflight. It is the patch that people have been waiting for for a very long time. It's patch 10.1.5 for World of Warcraft Dragonflight. And this is everything coming out in this patch. And you're about to see why everybody is so excited. Real fast though, quick shout out to this channel's sponsor, Zygor. If you want the ultimate World of Warcraft leveling, achievement, mount collecting, pet collecting, profession, doing whatever guide add-on, it is linked down below in the description. Check out Zygor today. You will not be disappointed. There's a lot to talk about with patch 10.1.5, so we're just gonna bullet our way through this patch, and we're just gonna talk about each and every feature, okay? Here we go. So the first thing is that Evoker players, you guys are finally getting a third spec. Gone are the days of the two spec Evoker. You guys are getting a third one, and it is called Augmentation. Now this is more of a damage dealing slash support spec, just so you guys know, and the theme is the black and bronze Dragonflight for this particular specialization. As an augmentation evoker, you are going to be amplifying the abilities of your allies as well as empowering them with temporary buffs that's going to create these powerful effects for everybody. Abilities like Urban Might, Eruption, Breath of Eons. It's a really versatile class. Picture like a bard. If the bard was a dragon and could breathe fire and um, fly, that's pretty much augmentation evokers. Kinda. The point is, you're gonna be buffing your allies, you're gonna be healing them, you're gonna be dishing out some crowd control, you're also gonna be dealing damage, and it's a good, you know, evoker spec to play if you really like playing support characters in MMORPGs. Next, let's talk about the new mega dungeon that is coming out in 10.1.5. It is called the Dawn of the Infinite, everybody, and it is located in the Caverns of Time. So there's gonna be eight bosses in this dungeon, just so you know, and this is the dungeon that is spoilers, sort of. It is the dungeon that is going to lead to the sort of conclusion of Nas Dormu's story where he becomes Murazond. So this is obviously a time travel-esque dungeon. I mean, it's Dawn of the Infinite, Bronze Dragon Flights. So we're gonna be fighting bosses from different eras in Azeroth's history. So, so hopefully Blizzard just goes crazy with the creativity with this one, I'm excited. And, at least from what I have read, the dungeon is going to be dropping some unique transmog sets as well as mounts, so be sure to check it out. It's a mega dungeon, it's going to take a little while, but it should be a really fun experience, at least hopefully. Next, let's talk about even more Bronze Dragonflight inspired stuff. We're talking about Time Rifts. So, Time Rifts are these things that are going to pop up once every hour in Tearhold Reservoir in Thaldraz's Staz, or however you pronounce it. And it's an open world event where players will gather up and they will be sent into a Time Rift, which will transport them to an alternate timeline where players have to battle against, you know, minions of the infinite Dragonflight. Now, as you kill enemies in the Time Rifts, you are going to earn what are called Paracausal Flakes. Now, these can be traded for a variety of different things things such as cosmetic items, utility items, those are like flight paths and toys and collectibles, as well as gear, obviously. Blizzard has been pushing out a lot of open world content with Dragonflight, and this time rift system is just yet another open world system which has its own unique currency that we can take part in. So if you're somebody that you love getting together with your fellow players and just kicking some ass, these are the events for you. Now let's talk about some smaller things with this patch, but things that are cool nonetheless. So first of all, in patch 10.1.5, every single race can be a warlock. That's right, you can be a Light Forge Draenei warlock. Does it make sense? Hell no, it don't make sense. It don't make a lick of sense, but you know, whatever. Everyone can be a warlock, and warlocks are badass, right? Man, screw lore when it comes to a video game. Man, get out of here, you stupid books, stupid lore. Like, ridiculous, right? Point is, everyone can be a warlock now. Also, in regards to warlocks, they are going to be able to customize their imps in this new patch. This means that as a warlock, once you log in, you'll be given a new quest and you will be taught how to customize the appearance and the look of your imp. Lots of little flavorful small things being added in this patch. You know, it's cool. Now, I will say, why are warlocks getting all the love? Why not death knights? Death knights are cooler. I mean, look at these guys, man. They're, they're badass. Warlocks get everything in this game. The green fire quest line, customizable imps and stuff. You might as well put a sign on them just saying that they're Blizzard's favorite class. 
I said it. Another thing that Blizzard is doing is they are removing all the allied race restrictions, aside from a level requirement, which is level 40. That means that all those allied races that you really wanna play, but you don't wanna go back and do those Battle for Azeroth quest lines to get those High Mountain Torin. You don't wanna go through all the trouble of doing all the quests in Xandalar to get those Xandalari trolls. Guess what, my friend? All those restrictions are removed. All you gotta be is level 40 and you get access to the allied races. Speaking for myself, I've been wanting to make a Kul Tirin for a long time, but I have not had the patience to do the whole unlock chain for it. So this is pretty exciting, at least for me. Another thing that Blizzard is doing is changing mounts a little bit in World of Warcraft and how they work. Pretty much at level 10, you are automatically going to learn Apprentice Riding, level 20 will be Journeyman, level 30, Expert, and level 40, Master Riding. The point is you will no longer have to go and purchase riding skills. You're just gonna learn everything automatically and completely for free. Now, if you're a Worgen player out there, if you're a big fan of werewolves and Van Helsing, guess what? You guys are getting five new fur colors in 10.5. That's pretty cool. And for those of you guys that love the cute side of World of Warcraft, Blizzard is putting in a new system in this patch, which is the Whelp Daycare. This is pretty much where you can go and take care of your very own little whelp pet. It's a kind of a daily quest system. You can earn some achievement points. You can get some gold. You can even get some new non-combat pets. Race your little whelps around. Teach them to hit the like button when they watch a YouTube video. Whatever you want to do, you're taking care of your very own whelps. And last but not least, if you guys are big fans of dragon riding in this expansion, which I'm pretty sure you guys are, they are introducing a new feature in 10.1.5 called the Kalimdor Cup. If you're somebody that you've just really wanted to fly in the old world, now you can. It's a whole new event system, going out, doing like the whole time trials and whatnot, flying through the loops in the old world. Who doesn't want to jump off of Mount Hyjal and fly all the way to Uldum, man? Like, it's going to be fun. And that's it, everybody. That's everything coming out in 10.1.5. Of course, there's going to be class changes and stuff, balancing and so on, but, but we're not going to go into all that with this video. Now, if you would like to read more into all this stuff that's coming out in 10.1.5, including even more information, I will include links down in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys soon in World of Warcraft.